Well, hello, friends, and welcome to the Daily Connection, and congratulations. We've completed another month of getting into the Word. We've got two months left to go, so, you know, if you need to catch up a little bit, do that on the weekends. It's always a great time on Saturday, maybe to read one or two chapters to catch up with things, or just jump in there with us where we're at. You can never go wrong with spending time in the Word of God. Now, I just want to preface today's verses by saying we should never delight when we see someone rejecting Jesus and, and kind of sort of getting called out for it. Uh, but it's so hard when we come to the religious leaders who are constantly, you know, coming against Jesus, trying to get in his way, trying to cause doubt cause, uh, among the people about his identity, trying to call into question his teaching when somebody kind of calls them out on it. And that's exactly what we see in John chapter 9. Now, the background of this is that Jesus was going through Jerusalem and he sees this guy begging. Uh, the guy had been blind from birth. He goes about healing him by spitting in the in the mud and taking that mud, putting it on his eyes, and then telling him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. Uh, as a result of that, the guy is healed. His his, his sight returns to him, and he he was blind from birth. So there's no doubt that a miracle has taken place. Uh, and then of course his parents are called in to be questioned. He's called in to be questioned. So he's already been before the, San, the, the the religious leaders one time already. So now they bring him back, and he says, "I don't understand. I've already told you guys all this." Now I want to pick up with verse thirty because, like I said, you know he's kind of calling them out a little bit, saying, "Hey, this is this is interesting." So pick up with me in verse thirty. This is an amazing thing the man told them. You don't know where he's from. And yet, he opened my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but if anyone is God-fearing and does his will, he listens to him. Throughout history, no one has ever heard of someone opening the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he wouldn't be able to do anything. You were born entirely in sin, they replied, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. All right, so here this guy, you know, he's just kind of working with logic and reason here. Uh, you know, clearly the religious leaders are the ones who know the scriptures, they've studied the scriptures, they should be well versed in applying the scriptures. And he says, hey, this is an amazing thing. You don't know where he's from, and yet what he's done is clearly a God-ordained miracle. And I like what he says there in verse 21. We know. So he say, hey, I may, not be as, uh, I may not be as educated in the scriptures as you, but we know that God does not listen to sinners. It must only someone who is a God fearer can, uh, uh, you know, make an, uh, an appeal to God for something to happen. In this case, for uh, you know, for a miracle to take place, and then for it to happen, God He listens to the God fearer, and He does. And so He says, and yet this thing that's been done is so unique that it's unmatched in history. So He's saying two things. First of all, God doesn't listen to sinners and respond in obedience to, or respond, uh, you know, to their their request. But number two. A miracle like this is, is unmatched in history. And yet you don't know where he's from. You don't know who he is. You don't know anything about him. So this guy's kind of mocking. He's kind of making fun. He's, in a way, he's almost ridiculing these religious leaders. And yet he says, hey, all I know is, is that I was blind from birth, and now I see. And if this man wasn't from God, verse 33, he would not be able to do anything. He would not have been able to do what he did for me. So in a way, he's showing more insight. He's showing more openness to the truth that God had indeed used this man, Jesus, which remember, he didn't know what Jesus looked like because Jesus told him to go and wash his eyes in the pool. Then Jesus left. So he knew Jesus' voice because he, he would recognize that voice quickly and clearly, but he didn't know what he looked like. So he couldn't pick him out in the crowd. But yet he says, you know what I do know about this man? That he had to be from God because what he did is nothing short of a God-ordained miracle. Well, the religious leaders would have none of it. In verse 34, they rebuke him. You were born entirely in sin. That statement kind of reverts back to what we saw earlier when the disciples asked Jesus, Jesus, who sinned, this guy or his parents? The thought is that if someone was born, but if a child was born blind, then the parents must have had some sort of sin in their life that they had not truly asked forgiveness of, had not gone through the process of being cleansed from, and so therefore their child was suffering the consequences. And so they're saying, hey, you're, he, so these religious leaders say, hey, you're totally a sinner, your parents were sinners, that's why you were born the way you were, and you're going to teach us? So they're basically saying, hey, get back in your place, man. 
We, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. We're the religious leaders. We're the elite. We're the clean. You're not. So get back in your place. And by the way, it says they kick him out, which they already admitted they were going to do. If anybody uh, acknowledged a, a, a confession of Jesus, they were going to kick him out. The parents barely avoid that by diverting back to him. That's why he's back there in the first place, by the way. The parents refused to answer. They said, hey, he's an adult. Let him answer for himself. We don't know. We just know he's, we know he can see. We know he's blind. We know he can see. So they avoided being kicked out. This guy, hey, he just comes on out and says, I, I don't know. You know, you, you think what you want to think. All I know is this. A God-ordained miracle has happened, and it happened through him. And that's all I can tell you. And, they, and he begins to kind of lecture them a little bit. But here's the thing, friends. It's yet a reminder that when people don't want to acknowledge who Jesus is, they will go to the end, to no end. There's no end to what they're willing to do in order to avoid acknowledging Jesus. They're okay calling him a good person. They're okay calling him a good teacher. They're okay calling him a guru. But to call him the Messiah, to call him the Christ, to then say, hey, I must confess my belief in him. I must put my faith in him. They're just not willing to go to those ends. And to that degree, they'll come up with different ways to disqualify him in terms of his supernatural existence, the fact that he was born of a virgin. I mean, how many have tried to disqualify and just totally dismiss his virgin birth? Or they'll just try to disqualify him in terms of his perfect life. They'll say, no one's perfect, not even Jesus. Well, yeah, he was perfect. He lived a perfect, sinless life. Or they'll disqualify his resurrection. They'll say he didn't really die. His disciples came and, you know, or he, he, he came back. He was only in a kind of a, a coma type state and he came back to his senses and, and they got him out of there. They'll try to dismiss everything about Jesus to avoid, you know, confessing him as Lord and placing their faith in him and surrendering their life to him. This guy said, you know what? I don't know all these things you're questioning me about, but what I do know is this. I was blind from birth. Because of his action, I'm able to see. God doesn't hear sinners, so therefore he can't be a sinner. And there's never been a miracle like this, and it was performed by his hands. Therefore, he must be one who's unique. And of course, Jesus comes back to him, verses 35 and following, and offers him an opportunity for salvation, and he doesn't hesitate. Jesus says, hey, do you believe in the Son of Man? He says, who is he? Jesus says, the one you're speaking with is he. He says, I believe, and he worshiped. This guy not only received physical sight, but he received the spiritual sight of salvation. And it's a reminder that for all the good that we receive from our Lord, the greatest good we can ever receive is our salvation by grace through faith. And of all that we do to reach out to unbelievers and to help unbelievers, the greatest gift we give them is the gospel because the greatest thing they can receive is their salvation. We can't ever forget that and we can't ever get distracted from that. Well, it's Wednesday. Don't forget tonight, we'll have Bible study at 6 o'clock. We'll have youth worship at 6 o'clock. A one at 545 check-in at 6 o'clock, cranking it up, along with choir, choir be practicing. Hey, come join us. Come join us for a time of refreshment, renewing, getting into the Word, you know, so that the Word gets into us, or taking our gifts and talents and pouring them into others through serving others. But the key is, friends, we're seeking to glorify God, and that's what this man did. He just wanted to glorify God, and that's what we're called to do. And we do that when we go out and live sent.